Hi everyone and welcome back to the Retro Shack and hopefully something totally new to you even if you're a big fan of the Sinclair ZX Spectrum in its various models, remakes and clones. If you've been watching for a while you'll know I've got an assortment of ZX Spectrum models some of which have featured on the channel. This ZX Spectrum Plus which has been hacked around with and serves as my hardware test machine and general donor and patient. This Harlequin 128K kit that I built at Christmas in this mind-bendingly gorgeous case which is a joy to use but does have some limitations which we'll go through later and of course this lovely ZX Spectrum Next which there isn't much to say about, everyone wants one and there aren't enough to go round. It's beautiful along with various motherboards such as this one waiting for a home. Obviously, as time goes by, original Spectrums are getting rarer and rarer, and you may just want to keep yours in the box stored away safely. And of course, the next is getting ridiculous money secondhand, and both Kickstarter campaigns have fully sold out, so getting one of those might be tricky. The Harlequin 128K kit is a fantastic build, really fun, and has extremely good reliability and compatibility, but it is just a clone of a ZX Spectrum, nothing more save for a joystick port and maybe that's okay for you maybe that's all you need I get a real kick out of using this just for the fact that I built it it gives me all the right feelies but as I said earlier there are also limitations so today we're looking at a clone by Eugene Lozavoy and it has some really cool features which in my mind make it a really good choice if you want something a little more than a standard spectrum but don't need or want all of the features of a spectrum next so join me as we discover the Sisyph 512K. Before we begin, I'd like to say a big thanks to the sponsor for this video, Fifine. As you know, I struggled a lot with audio in the early days of the channel and worked my way through a number of different microphones. This K690 was offered to me to try out. I guess they felt sorry for me. Well, now it sits permanently on the desk in the studio. And while it can't improve the meaning behind my nonsensical droning, it does at least mean you can finally hear me properly. All the details of this microphone are down in the description if you, like me, want to be heard clearly, if not taken at all seriously. Thanks for fine. Wait a second, did I say 512k? Yep, but we'll get to that in a bit. In the pre-title segment, I pointed to this as my Harlequin build, but it isn't anymore. I've put the Sisyph in here for practical reasons, which we'll cover later. But also, this machine has now become my everyday use spectrum at the moment. And as we go through this review, you may well see why that is. This little board offers a lot of features for the price, being not only cheaper than the next, but then again, most things are. It was also cheaper than the Harlequin kit. I grabbed this off eBay for about £90 fully built. So what's the catch? Well, to be honest, I haven't really found one yet, hence it making its way onto my play desk. Let's run down this feature list and take a good look at what it offers. The GitHub page states that this is a half-size PCB for 48K rubber case spectrums and that case modification isn't necessary and if you're just using this as a standard spectrum, then that's true. But if you want to use the SD card slot, the inbuilt joystick port, the NMI and reset switches, or even in my case, plug in the video cable, you're gonna have to get your hacksaw out. And that's one reason I didn't wanna put this into an older spectrum case. I don't really like the idea of hacking away at history with a saw, especially when you can't get replacement spectrum plus cases yet. There are three different timing models on this Sisyph board. Pentagon timing, which is the wildly popular Russian clone timing from the early 90s, the original 128K timing, and the original 48K Spectrum timing. So any demo or game you care to throw at this will very probably work on one of those timings. All of these can be adjusted on the fly in case you're running some software and realize you're in the wrong mode. There's a real Z80 in here, and it's configurable to run in 3.5 MHz, 7 MHz, and 14 MHz turbo modes, the same as the original Next release before they introduced the 28 MHz nutter mode. Again, on this board, the Z80 speed is configurable on the fly without the need to reset or come out of the program you're in. 
we have a switchable ROM, so we can by default boot to the 128K standard ROM or the plus 3E div MMC ROM, and then load off the SD card from the slot on the left hand side of the board. Yes, that's div MMC built in. Interesting when you consider that this board costs less than a div MMC future. The 512K of RAM manifests in two distinct modes. If there's an SD card in the slot and you're running the div MMC ROM, then 128K of that memory is reserved for the div MMC. 128K is reserved for compatibility with 128K software and 128K is available as page memory. With the Harlequin, plugging in the div MMC demotes you to running only 48K games safely, as some of the machines 128K is taken up by the div MMC software. If you're running the standard ROM and no SD card, you've got 128K standard memory and 384K available for paging. Great for some of those big mega demos. Again, we have a real AY8910 programmable sound generator with switchable stereo configurations, and we also have mono Covox digital sound samples and Sound Drive, which is a four channel stereo Covox, which puts the audio of this spectrum into another stratosphere. Listen to this. Display-wise, this board has ULA+, which allows for retargeted palettes for older Spectrum games, and this can really make a difference to some games. Just look at Dandare 3 and Savage running on this board with and without ULA+. All of the logic is being handled by this Altera EPM1270 CPLD or Complex Programmable Logic Device, which is kind of, sort of, a bit like FPGA chips you'll find in the next or in the Mr. emulation devices. We get a Sega 6 button joystick input that supports Kempston and Sinclair modes. There's PAL and RGB video out. Bizarrely, there's also a digital video out for EGA monitors. Might have to wire that up and give it a go. No idea what that would look like. This board hasn't got it fitted, but you can drop a Wi-Fi module on top of the AY sound generator and get on the net just like on the next. And of course, there's the expected tape input and a mention of Bluetooth as well, although I haven't figured that bit out yet and presume it needs the ESP Wi-Fi bit for that too. There's a reset button on the back along with what is called the magic button and it's through this that you can set the machine's timings, ROM selection and CPU speed along with another few bits all on the fly. Simply holding the magic button, press the designated key on the keyboard and the magic happens. Nice. From a compatibility perspective, this board seems really good and the combination of the extra memory, the ULA Plus and the ability to switch between ROMs and CPU timings means you get access to pretty much everything ever written for the Spectrum and its derivatives. As I mentioned, you will need to hack around at a case. Don't worry about the messy nature of this one, I'll be printing off a nice back panel for this soon and I have a nice new case and keyboard coming for the Harlequin. The only real downside to this board is that there is very little documentation, so you'll need to join a community to learn from other users. But once you've got it all set up and you've figured out the magic button, it all becomes very intuitive. I know that Eugene is working on an on-screen magic menu that will pop up when you push the button to help new users find their way around. And there is already a later revision of this board with some stuff I can't bring myself to look at because then I'll want that version too. At some point I have to admit I have a problem. There's never been a better time to jump into the world of the ZX Spectrum and there are so many options out there which keep this machine alive for those of us remembering it from first time around. 
and to provide a stepping stone for the younger generation to learn about and enjoy these lovely machines without ever having to endanger your own lovingly cared for original. I've got my eye on a Pentagon 4 megabyte machine. Yes, that's 4 megabytes, and that'll feature on the channel as soon as I can get my grubby mitts on one. In the meantime, I'm going to be enjoying this Sisyph 512K. So there's the Sisyph 512K. I hope you've enjoyed the review. It's a great little board. If you don't want, can't afford, can't get, don't need a ZX Spectrum next, want something a little bit more than a standard Spectrum, and haven't got the time or patience to build a Harlequin 128 kit or another one of those clones. You can of course build the Sisyph as a kit yourself, I just got mine already built off eBay. And when you consider it was cheaper than even building this Harlequin kit, I think you'll agree it's pretty good value. Anyway, thanks for watching, if you like the video please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications of new content. As always, please leave your comments, we love to read them. If you want to buy us a coffee, there's a link on the main page. And until next time in the shack, it's goodbye from me.